Hi guys, I just wanted to go through um, my current project and some of the iterations that um, I've gone through uh, and later on hopefully um, <coughs> develop this small and have a fully working model. Just to start from the beginning, took full inspiration from the Albahar Towers where they have this um, sort of Aragami pyramid where it contracts and expands uh, and um, what that allows you to do is to control how much sunlight comes into the building. Now my uh, goals are to recreate this uh, in a much smaller scale, more practical um, and ultimately have it uh, fully working um, and uh, have it open source. Now <clears throat> um, obviously I started off with a piece of paper just to try and get all the movement um, and the angles uh, correct and trying to understand a bit more. It's going to be a quick video just going through all of those iterations, uh, well not all of them but quite a lot of them very quickly. Uh, and later on, hopefully, I'll expand on them some more. So this is a uh, this is the shape that we're trying to go for here. Um, first thing that I tried to do was just trying to cre create a frame, uh, and I did that uh, very simply, just uh, like here, where I just created a base for something like this to sit on it, uh, and uh, I decided to add these supports uh, along the frame of it to try and potentially uh, add something to it. Uh, now, um, just quickly going back to this, uh, one of the things that I really wanted was to have a method of recreating this um, very quickly and uh, that it would all be the same. Uh, and I, obviously, I started to 3D print uh, quite a lot of these um, shapes. And the problem with the printer uh, or the filament itself is that uh, after a while, when um, hasn't got that much moisture in it, it just becomes very brittle it just cracks and as well as that, uh, all the movements how I achieved this level of freedom with movement was just at the layer heights uh, I had uh, more here than I, did, I had where the joints uh, are um, and that worked really well so that's something that I would, I'll be looking to carry on potentially and I had several iterations of, of this uh, but you can see that they do tend to break off uh, very easily, don't tend to be as um, as strong as you would have thought or hoped. Um, what I did do was, uh, with the ones that broke, I just added some tape and gave them the idea of uh, using some a, a dual nozzle uh, printer where it would allow me to print some um, flexible uh, material on there with some hard material to, on the on here. But <clears throat> with the, a dual n nozzle um, printers and um, flexible um, materials it gets uh, very uh, difficult to do, um, so it's not something I've explored uh, fully um, yet. So just going back to the frame, uh, and um, obviously that's what we uh, continue to use, and the idea was to have something uh, riding on, on these, so I noticed that it was these that predominantly were riding on something, so as a further development, what I started to do was just uh, incorporate this these high um, points here where these could easily ride on it and they wouldn't uh, hit any of the edges and uh, now the benefit of this is as well is that I uh, sort of chamfer the edges so I would miss it even more uh, the alternative is just make that higher and this would easily easily work um, now just quickly just to go through uh, some of the motor concepts um, not concepts but uh, ideas that I've, uh, I wanted to uh, implement I had a brushed uh, DC motor, had some uh, geared motors, uh, with an M one with an M3 um, thread on it um, and as well as that I had a servo motor um, I'm sure you're aware but the servo motor here uh, obviously gives you a higher level of control uh, of, what, of the positioning of where it is while the DC motor without any additional um, electronics um, wouldn't, wouldn't do that, uh, same for these gear motors um, but ideally these are the ones that I'd like to go for because these uh, have um, uh, a lot of strength behind them and the size of it which is something that, I, that I'm looking for I have come across some, uh, these I think are M M20s and have come across uh, some uh, N10 uh, motors which are even smaller which I've ordered um, it's just on the way um, so yeah we're looking to stay with this over motor for the time being just because of its uh, level of control um, so the idea here was now that we need to we've got the servo motor, we need to implement it onto uh, onto this design. Now uh, the thing with this is um, 
simply by me pushing them down it spreads so I started to go and try and find some um, M3 uh, nuts that allowed me to, to do that um, all, and that's why there was a, a hole in there and all I had to do was uh, thread that through there and then all I needed to find a way was to push that this down so it would open um, and that was a I had to do that with the server somehow um, now I uh, yeah, hit a lot of uh, bumps along the road with this one uh, so I decided just to put it to one side and to move on to uh, other uh, ideas and I'll just quickly uh, run through these before coming back to, uh, to these uh, it was uh, potentially uh, the idea of using uh, printed gears and I've got this one here where the idea was to use um, this uh, motor put it at the top and then this would spin here I don't know if you can see that and then I've got this notch here that would move uh, along along the this and um, the idea was that at some point I would have the the rest of the shape and it would close and open close and open <clears throat> and uh, but the problem with this is it starts to get very complicated it's very thick and as well as that you know the longest uh, M3 you know I could find uh, I think it was 40 mil and that's it I did come across <clears throat> I think these uh, 60 or 70 mil uh, threaded nuts, uh, well headless, and uh, that was the longest I could find. So th they seemed to work, but it was again it was very difficult. And these became very brittle, as you can see. I printed several iterations of these, uh, trying to change things, and it just became, it just kept on breaking and breaking and breaking. And so then I, I decided just to, I really liked it, but I decided just to move away from it uh, completely, and um, to just put them back to one side there. Um, and then again, I went back to sort of this approach of having notches there and I need to think, find a way to uh, attach a motor so again going back to the gears taking inspiration from that I applied a uh, beveled gear there and the idea was again to have the motor on there and to um, rotate this and then I would have another gear there uh, with the nut and the nut would move and move uh, uh, this down again very clunky it needed a little of, uh, reinforcement because uh, otherwise it would snap so I decided to move away from that and uh, I decided to uh, look again at all of these and I, and I thought uh, if I could just design all of it individually in different parts and um, maybe that would work so what I decided to do uh, was um, I looked at it uh, in, in a sort of a bigger scale and just one part of it um, so I looked at one of the, the, the corners and uh, decided to design it and I thought you know uh, would this work and um, how would I do this at a small scale? So, <clears throat> what I did was I started to design these um, sort of complex, slightly complex uh, joints that would uh, allow me to do that, and they would just ride on a on a frame, and that sort of relatively worked okay um, because it was almost like uh, I did this sort of a demo for me to uh, understand it more. Um, that all of this would ride, you know, all these moving parts. But again, um, the the parts I needed to be corrected where things started to get very thick. Uh, these uh, notches here, and and I did get round to correcting all uh, a lot of that. But again, it became very uh, complicated to use. Uh, I think I've got a small clip that I might be able to show you of this working. Um, so moving f moving f moving along with that, uh, I came across, I came uh, up with these sort of fishing wire and the idea would be to put the server motor on there and attach that on there like that and then as this would turn you would be able to uh, pull all of that like that and this is very simple this was just some uh, elastic uh, hair bands very small that uh, put across there with some M2 uh, nuts and that worked really well um, but again very complicated uh, once you start to get all of it and then this didn't take into consideration this uh, the rest of the the body it didn't take into consideration at all, so very difficult to um, <coughs> to assemble and carry on and develop further. Um, but ultimately, it's the idea, it's a way forward I like to go because um, I think it gives you the most the most strength. Um, so I, this is the one I started to develop in continuation of that one. But then this is where I sort of came ac across my own error, where you know by doing this and I thought oh if I had these moving here it would help me, but it doesn't at all everything moves in this everything moves 
So everything needs to have a joint of some sort where everything moves. So then just decided to go back to um, this idea um, that I mentioned previously with the um, with the screw and the nuts. And then uh, I developed a bit further, started to look into adding um, a servo um, somewhere down there. I also looked at it to do it with the geared motor because it was smaller. Um, and just continuing with that. And again, several iterations where I first tried to get, get rid of more material, it became more brittle, things started to break, as, as you can see, because the type of uh, material it is, and the constant movement just kept on breaking. So ultimately, what I did was, uh, I went back to the paper, because paper is so forgiving, and with all those movement joints, so I just went back to it, and uh, I decided to stay with it, and sort of um, forget about all of these moving joints that I designed, um, and leave that maybe for later. Um, and what I what I did was uh, at some point uh, I developed a, um, one of these where it had springs. I had some of these springs uh, in all sort of uh, the three corners, and they were attached to uh, to the, these uh, inside edges, and they would um, pull it all in. And then all I needed to do was push it down, and that worked really well. But again, these you can see how big these. Uh, um, springs are and I couldn't find any smaller ones. I tried to look for some watch springs, but um, couldn't find any So then uh, I came across these elastic bands and they, they did the job went back to the paper and uh, developed uh, this This one here and now this this works this you know I push it down it comes back up All I need to do is attach one of these and um, That that worked really well, you know, I also thought about putting some um Creates in like a, a flywheel there where, where I put some fishing wire and then the servo down there and then that will pull it but I just found some push wire uh, and uh, that that's fixed it and then from that um, I decided to develop uh, into developing and uh, I developed uh, the rest of it and I did all this uh, works I won't show in this video I'm not sure in a, in a later video uh, and all of these just have servos um, glued onto there the reason they're glued on and they haven't got a frame is because by gluing it, I've got a higher level of freedom to um, positioning it. While if I create a frame, I wouldn't uh, be able to do that. Um, because the, the crude method that I used to uh, attach the push wire was just with some hot glue. And um, you know, you can never get that in the right pl place every single time. So then, and these push wires as well, the shape that they are, you can never get it in the right shape either. So that was the problem with that. And so this is where I am at the moment. Um, moving forward, I'm um, going to go back to sort of the moving joints and mechanically move everything um, with um, some. I think I'm going to move away from these servers because these servers are terrible. Uh, I had uh, 12 of these and all 12 just burnt out very quickly. Um, they're, just, they're just terrible. Very, very bad. Uh, these are. I bought them very cheaply. So I guess you, uh, you get what you pay for. Um, so I'm going back to some uh, N10. Um, DC uh, geared motors, and uh, I'm going to try and develop, continue developing um, this one here with all these moving joints, like I mentioned previously. Um, but yeah, um, that's uh, where I am um, at the moment. If you um, guys have uh, any suggestions, any ideas, uh, or any anything else that you'd like to see, and um, please let me know. Hope you've enjoyed. Um, thank you very much.